Hi, it's great to see you again. Today, I wanted to share with you some of my tips and recipes for a make-ahead autumn dinner party. I'm serving a French leek soup for the first course, a comforting beef stew for the main course, and a glorious, glistening apple tart tatin for the grand finale. I think you will find this party is entirely stress-free for both the cook and the host. All of the dishes can be made up to three days ahead of time. All right, we're going to start with the leek soup. Now, I should tell you that I have been making this soup since I was 14 years old. My best friend's mother was from France and she taught me how to make the soup. Roughly dice the white and tender green parts of three large or four medium leeks. Then melt 50 grams or four tablespoons of butter over low heat in a large pot or a Dutch oven. Add the leeks and stir in one tablespoon of salt and several grinds of black pepper. Then cover the pot and let the leeks sweat for 10 minutes or until they soften. Next, peel and roughly dice two medium-sized golden potatoes. My leeks have softened, so now add six cups of water. Now, I brought my water to a boil just to save video time and add the water. Crank up the heat. And then take one and a half generous tablespoons of cornstarch and mix it with just enough water to make a smooth slurry. Add the cornstarch solution and stir for 30 seconds until the sauce thickens. Add the potatoes. Partially cover the pot and reduce the heat to a simmer. Let this simmer until the potatoes are tender. That's going to take, oh, 15 to 20 minutes. Meanwhile, mince one bunch of parsley. All right, my potatoes are tender. Now you can serve the soup just like this. All you have to do is add one cup of heavy cream and the parsley, just stir those in. But if you're going to serve the soup as a first course, which I'm going to do, you will probably want to puree it first. I'm going to puree my soup in a blender. I've washed out my pot and now return the soup pureed to the soup pot. Smells really wonderful, you guys. I mean, this is a very simple peasant soup, but looks, tastes, and smells like a million bucks. Then, oh, add the cream. I want to stir that in. Again, that was one cup of heavy cream. I suppose you could use milk here. I'm a full fat kind of guy. And then stir in the parsley. Such pretty soup. Now, you want to taste the soup for seasonings. Does not need any additional salt or pepper. It's really wonderful. Now, you can make the soup well in advance. Just be sure to let it come to room temperature first, then cover it and pop it in the refrigerator for three or even four days. Now we're off to the berry farm. I seem to always be vlogging from the berry farm, but honestly, it's my favorite farm store. And now I'm looking for table decorations. I'm going to look for little winter squash. Such a 
This is amazing. This is exactly what I was looking for. I will show you what I bought for my centerpiece a little later in this video. Okay, good morning. Today is Wednesday. Now, I made the soup yesterday. The dinner party is on Friday. So today, Wednesday, I'm going to fix both the beef stew and the tart tatin. And for the beef stew, I'm going to start by peeling and chopping seven large carrots and one large onion. All right, on to the beef. What I have here is two and a half to three pounds of what's called stewing beef. This is Angus beef. And what you want to do is pat it dry with paper towels and then generously season it with salt and pepper. Now I'm going to make this beef stew in my instant pot pressure cooker, but I'm going to brown the beef and then later the onion in my electric skillet simply because my electric skillet over here has a lot more surface area. So add a glug of oil to the skillet and you do want to brown the beef to, oh, like a walnut brown color. That way it becomes caramelized and it just has a wonderful flavor. All right, now I'm going to saute the onions in the same skillet. I'm just adding a little more oil. And in go the onions. Just going to saute them until they achieve a little bit of color and become soft. Add the onions to the beef. Now I have a lot of stuck on bits from the meat and the onions here in the skillet. So I'm going to deglaze the skillet with a half cup of beef stock. I'm also going to have a beef stock facial apparently. And then you just stir to scrape up all of those stuck on bits. Now pour that beef stock right into the beef and onions. All right, throw the beef and the onions and that bit of stock into the Instant Pot. Then since some of my beef stock evaporated when I was deglazing, the skillet, I'm going to add just a little splash more. That's all. You only need a half cup of beef stock in this recipe, which is not really a recipe. I make beef stew differently every time. So now I'm going to add, oh, about a teaspoon of prepared horseradish because I like horseradish. I'm also going to add an entire six ounce can of tomato paste because I love tomato paste. And a nice splash of Worcester sauce, about two tablespoons. And two or three cloves of garlic or you could use garlic paste. I love this stuff. It's really convenient. I just buy it at my supermarket. One, two, three. One teaspoon of this paste is equivalent to one garlic clove. I almost forgot to add the carrots and I did cut these into largest chunks. If you cut the carrots too small, they will turn mushy or even disintegrate under the high pressure of the Instant Pot. 
So big chunks for the carrots. And then I want to add some dried thyme, about a teaspoon. Give this a quick stir. Then we're going to cook this under high pressure for 25 minutes. So high pressure for 25 minutes and then natural pressure release for 15 minutes. My beef stew has finished cooking. Again, that was 25 minutes at high pressure and then a 15 minute natural pressure release. The stew smells heavenly. So now I'm going to thicken the juices. To thicken the juices, add one generous tablespoon of cornstarch blended with just enough water to make a smooth paste. I'm going to let this stew cool to room temperature. Then I will put it in a pot with a lid and pop it into the refrigerator. Now I'm off to my local apple orchard. I want to find some good baking apples for the apple tart tatin. All right, on to the tart tatin. And the first thing we need is an all butter pastry crust, which I'm going to make in my little food processor here. To the processor, add one and a half cups or 214 grams of all purpose flour. Then add a quarter teaspoon of salt and 113 grams, that's a half cup, of cold diced butter. Pulse the machine a few times just to break up the butter. Then, with the machine running, add one third cup of ice water through the feed tube. Stop the machine as soon as a crumbly mixture develops. Gather the dough into a ball, flatten it into a disc, and then wrap it in cling film. Pop the dough into the refrigerator, oh, for 30 minutes to an hour so that the butter can firm up and the flour can absorb all of the moisture. Now put the zest and juice of one lemon into a large bowl. Peel, core, and quarter six apples. Then cut the quarters in half and drop them into the lemon mixture. Stir in one half cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar. Set the apples aside for 15 minutes while they exude their juices. Drain the apples. In an oven proof eight or nine inch skillet, melt a half cup or 113 grams of butter over low heat. Add one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar. Stir slowly and constantly for about five minutes or until the mixture turns a rich caramel color. Immediately turn off the heat. In a single layer on top of the hot caramel, arrange the apple slices in an attractive pattern. I'm making concentric circles here. Dump the remaining apples on top. You don't have to arrange these as they won't be on public view after the tart is unmolded. Return the skillet to medium-low heat. Using a bulb baster, suck up some of the caramel and redistribute it over the apple slices. Then cover the skillet and let the apples cook for 15 minutes. Meanwhile, roll the dough one inch larger than the diameter of your pan. Poke five venting holes in the center of the dough.
Place the dough over the apples and gently tuck it in along the edge of the pan. Bake at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius for exactly 20 minutes. You have to unmold the tart tatan so that the crust is on the bottom. So I have my pedestal stand here, which is just big enough. And then we have to invert this. Say a prayer. Voila! Apple tart tatan. Since all of my cooking is done, I have plenty of time to decorate the table. I selected a tan tablecloth and a white and tan table runner. On the runner, I'm arranging the colorful gourds and winter squash that I purchased from the berry farm. I'm also adding to the centerpiece some autumn leaves from my yard. White candles in glass holders complete the arrangement. For dinnerware, I'm using gold-rimmed plates and soup plates. A gold napkin complements each place setting. The flavors of the leek soup and the beef stew will only improve after they have been refrigerated and reheated. The tart tatin will remain fresh and wonderful for up to three days. I added rice and a baguette to my menu. Thank you for joining me for this autumn dinner party. I hope you had a good time. If you picked up some tips and tricks along the way, I hope you will give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe and be sure to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye for now.